now come to the end of our section on maps and plotting geospatial data. And to wrap up this section, we have Tristan Guillaume, who is a freelance data visualization uh, designer and specialist based in France, come and talk to us about the Voronoi map. Now, you may have heard of the Voronoi map before. You may have even actually seen one before. And if you're involved in the data visualization field, you may have seen one and not even know that it is a Voronoi map. The famous John Snow cholera map, which I'm wearing on my t-shirt today, is a famous map in the data visualization field, but not many people know that it's actually a Voronoi map at its heart and not a sort of proportional symbol map as many of us may have originally thought that it was with the little dashes and the little notes on the map itself. So Tristan's gonna walk us through how to read a Voronoi map and apply it to the John, the John Snow cholera map. So it's off to Tristan to understand how this type of data visualization works. Hi, John. Thanks for the invitation and let's talk about Voronoi. Um, I think in the database world, it's important to distinguish two types of charts, the Voronoi diagram and the Voronoi trim. A Voronoi diagram is a mathematical concept that serves a really specific geometrical purpose. So let me explain with an example uh, from Wikipedia. So we can take a few points and these points we will call them seeds. Uh, and we want to partition the Canva into region that we will call uh, Voronoi cell. So each seed has an associated region, and in that region, you can take any points, the seed will be closer to that point than any other seed. It means that as you navigate in your canvas, you will always know where is the closest seed. So how do you build that? Um, what you can do is draw a circle around the seed and increase the radius until all the circles collide. The result of that is a Voronoi diagram. And in the example you, you just see, you can take, for example, any points in the orange area. The C that it contains will be the closest one. So Voronoi diagrams are used in a variety of domain, uh, from health to science or aviation, to find, for example, the nearest airport. Uh, it can also be used in other data visualization uh, aspect, like, for example, in a scatter plot to display the tooltip of the nearest point from your mouse. And you can find it also in the nature, like for example, in the giraffe skin. My favorite and the most famous example is the John Snow Scorella map from 1954. In that case, the seeds are the water pump. And of course, you want to get your water from the closest pump, so you can divide the map into region, the Voronoi cell. And by correlating the number of deaths in a region to the location of the specific pump, John Snow was able to notify the pump that was causing uh, the issue and was able to confirm his theory that the disease was spreading with contaminated water. The second concept is the Voronoi tree map. Uh, and it's much simpler uh, and has nothing to do with geographical information or distance. And actually it's also uh, called a power diagram, which is a weighted Voronoi diagram. Basically it's just a standard tree map, but with a different shape. Uh, and you can use it to represent part to whole and often hierarchical information. And there is some controversy about this chart uh, because, and I think it's true, sometimes a simple bar chart or even a, a sorted pie chart can do a better job to compare the values or display a part to all information. But the Voronoi allows us to use a different shape and it may help to get the public attention. And one of my best examples uh, of that is a visualization from Nadia Bremer uh, when she represented the usage of hazardous pesticides in different crops. And I think it's really beautiful and engaging. And maybe, yeah, maybe there is a more efficient way to display this uh, information, but then maybe I would never have looked at it. Uh, because when I saw this visualization, the singularity of it, uh, of the representation, made me want to learn more about, uh, about this subject. So in my opinion, it's not um, a bad way to visualize your data. Uh, I will never use it in a business-related dashboard or when the exactitude of the information is important. But it's a very powerful tool, and I will use it as a, as a hook to get people's attention and then present them more standard charts. And thanks to Tristan for that great review of the Voronoi map and to explain how the famous John Snow map is actually not your sort of standard map, but is itself a Voronoi map. So I hope you'll be able to explore Voronoi maps in your own work and maybe apply them to some other features and some other data that you can use to more effectively communicate your work and your analysis. So we turn next to qualitative data on the next episode of the One Chart at a Time video series, and I will see you then.